We have had a busy summer here on our off-grid home build. We have recently shared the completion of several big projects, including the earthen floors, guest bathroom, and concrete countertops. We have also been working on some other projects which are important to the completion of the home. In today's video, we'll be showing these projects as well as an update on our son's Hyper Adobe build. But first, Red is going to do a very brief overview of our journey so far. For those who may have recently joined us, we are Red in April and we're building our own home and everything associated with it on a piece of raw land that we purchased in Arizona. It is truly off the grid and self-sufficient without a single wire, pipe, or line of any kind coming in. So of course we had to put in all of our own utilities. We started off by having the well drilled and then we built our own barn to serve as a staging point for everything else we were doing. Then we built our own solar system and mounted the solar panels on the roof of the barn. And then we were ready to get started on the house. We started off by doing the septic first, which finished off the utilities, and then got into the home build in earnest. We are now in the process of building our low-cost home and doing all the work ourselves. We wanted a stylish, modern, comfortable home with a passive energy design. Passive energy means that the home regulates the temperature by itself most of the time, with only minimal energy input needed during the most extreme times of the year. The passive energy design means that we will not need to install a traditional heater or air conditioner in the home. Instead, we have a evaporative cooler that we'll use as needed during the summertime for cooling, and we don't think we'll need anything for heat. We shouldn't need to add any additional heat to the home. If we do, we may build a rocket mass stove just for those few nights in the winter where it's a little too cool. This has really been an interesting and exciting project for us. The structure is now up, and we're moving on to the finishing stages of the build. So join us as we find ways to add style and beauty to the home while keeping our consumption, eco footprint, and costs low. And now here are some of those projects that we've been working on in between those bigger projects. Here I'm working on trimming out a couple of high wall vents that are important to the ventilation of our home. An important part of the passive energy design is being able to control airflow through the home. Our house is really tight, and so we need some ventilation, and so we put in two of these vents up high in the bedrooms that'll basically be exhaust ports. The inlet port is the evaporative cooler, which can be used with or without water, and so we can bring air in as needed and exhaust the air through these high exhaust ports and circulate air through the house when we need to to control temperature. We have been keeping track of temperatures in the home to see how it's doing, and it's doing very well. So this temperature was taken while we were putting in the earthen floors, and we were seeing a high of 80 degrees in the house and a low of 74 degrees. So a range of 74 to 80, so that's only 6 degrees. So here's another set of readings that we took over the next few weeks, and it's a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger span. It goes from 71 to 83, which is about a 12 degree span. And that was during the monsoon season, so it was very humid. It was getting up into the low to mid 90s, and it was humid enough that our evaporative cooler won't help. And in fact, it was broke at the time, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm fixing it. I had a little trouble with the bearing coming loose on the shaft, so I'm fixing that here. This evaporative cooler has actually been a bit of a pain. It was a brand new unit, but it's I've struggled with it anyway. Hopefully, I finally got it fixed and. I had to drill a hole all the way through the shaft to make a really good connection for the bearing and then put in a, a cotter pin anyway. Been a whole, it's been a whole thing, but hopefully I've, I've now got this uh, evaporative cooler fixed properly. So this evaporative cooler is really important to the design of our home, and it's because it's dual function. It basically works as a big blower to move air through the house, and we'll be using that year round to ventilate the house and bring you know warm air in when we need it, to push hot air out when we want to, and so it's a really important feature. Here I am putting the vent cover on for the evaporative cooler. Had to do a little rework around the frame to get that vent cover on. But we'll use this cooler year-round to move air through the house, and then also in the summertime, especially during the dry part of the summer, we will use the water cooling feature, which will lower the temperature considerably of the incoming air and allow us to cool the, the house. It's not quite as effective during the monsoon because of the higher humidity in the air, but it still does lower the temperature, so we'll be using it mostly during the summer, during the day with the cooling water feature, and at night just as a vent to bring that cool night air into the house and flush out the hot air. In the wintertime, it'll still give a place for ventilation so the air in the house will naturally move. The house is pretty tight and needs to be able to breathe, but we have louvers on these vent covers that we can block off the airflow when we want to. 
I'm finally getting around to doing a little maintenance on these solar panels. The bolts that hold them down to the rails need to be re-tightened every six months or so to make sure they don't get loose. And it's been like a year and a half. I've been meaning to do this forever. And I finally got around to it. I got the ladder and I'm up on the top of the shipping container. And fortunately, they're pretty easy to access. The way we built this roof, I kind of have a little walkway in front of the panels. So I'm able to get to the low ones real easy. And most of these are, are tight, don't need any tightening, but I'm checking every one just to make sure that none of them are getting loose. We do really like these solar panels, and in fact, they were a bit of a splurge for us. Our entire system only cost $6,000, and that's for a 6,000 watt system. So it was a very inexpensive system, when, which we really had to shop around for, had to order some parts in that took months to get. Here I am actually finding a loose bolt. This was, I found one or two that were actually pretty loose, a little scary loose. You can see here, I had to tighten up on this one quite a bit. So it was good I got up here and did this. These are a large modern solar panel. They're monocrystalline construction and they do great on cloudy days, which was a little surprising. We expected a big decrease, which there is some decrease, but we still make a surprising amount of power even on cloudy days. So we love these panels. This system has really been amazing. You know, we've used this for all of our power needs out here. We built the entire house with this solar system. We haven't had to run the generator for power tools one time. We've used all of our powers come from the solar and it's been great. You know, even though sometimes I've been working all day with power tools, running power tools from 10 in the morning to six at night, never had any trouble. It's served us very well. We have two grown children that live on the property out here with us and we built a solar system for each of them. So we have three identical solar systems out here on the property and that's what we're all using and they've worked really well. We moved over to the other shipping container just to do a little touch up on the paint. And here you can see the garden. It's built off of the shipping container. So the shipping container provides some shelter from kind of block from wind for the garden, but the garden still gets good sun. It gets full sun over there. The garden has done so well this year. April just wanted to do a little garden. She knew she didn't have a ton of time to put into it, but she loves gardening and wanted to do something this year. And it has been incredible. It's really surpassed our expectations. It has produced all the vegetables that we could eat. We've also been giving it away to family members. It's really been neat to eat food from the garden every day. And we've been doing this for several months. So love the garden. And it's a big part of the lifestyle that we wanted to experience out here. I'm moving on to installing the shelving in the closets. I'm working in the entryway closet here. This is right by the back door, which is the main door we'll use to access the house, actually. The front door is a sliding glass door, so we'll be using this door most of the time. And so this closet will serve as our coat closet. You know, all of our outdoor clothing will be here. We will also store shoes and other things in this closet. It's going to be super handy. I'm just installing some easy shelves here. These shelves are you know, moderately priced and easy to install. They're also really functional. So we've used these in the past and liked them. And so it's exciting to get to this part of the project to be able to install these. Already putting them to use, storing some paint and what have you. And now I'm moving on to the master closet. I've already installed the clothes rack on the left, and that's a 12 foot long clothes rack. It goes the entire width of the closet. And I've just installed some shelves on the end here to store blankets and what have you. I also installed this shelf slash clothes rack above the washer and dryer, and then one in the guest bedroom as well. We drove up to our son's place to bring him some scaffolding and a step stool. His walls are getting high enough that he needs some of that. So you can get a look at his walls. His house is coming along really nicely. These walls are rock solid. They're so wide. They're 18 inches wide. And as you can see, it's got that bag dolly up there that draws the bag along. And it's, it's wide enough that he can stand up there. And this thing is so solid. It's been through the monsoon season, some heavy rains. It's hard to express how solid this wall it is. It, it feels like a rock wall. Here's a look at where he gets his dirt from. He's excavating his dirt there and filling his bags with it. He's making some really good progress here. And here we are putting the scaffolding together. We brought up both sets so that he can, he can use them as needed to help him work at height on these walls. Our son isn't the stereotypical builder type personality. This isn't a project that he could have ever imagined himself doing, but he's finding that he's capable and he's enjoying the process. This Hyper Adobe build is really cool and it's something that I find really interesting as well. And I'm looking forward to getting up here and spending more time helping my son once we finish up our house. Before we brought this scaffolding down, he was just using a flimsy metal folding chair to get on and off this wall. And he's having to lift everything up all the way by hand. So hopefully this scaffolding will really help him out. 
Another part of the build that you don't really think about is all the time we spend ordering stuff. So I spend hours researching materials and products and ordering them online. I'm finally getting back to the dryer vent installation. I had originally ran this with a flexible pipe and with some wise viewers saw that and, and advised us to go with a solid pipe because the flexible pipes can collect lint and be a fire hazard. So that was great advice. And we're changing that out and I'm finally getting around to it. So I'm installing this solid pipe and I'm doing it exposed. So it's gonna be exposed and visible on the interior. I suppose I could have ran it through the ceiling, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to disturb the insulation. And so I just decided to run it exposed. It goes with the kind of industrial theme that we have going on anyway. And I kind of like the look of it. So we've purposefully avoided running anything through the ceiling and we don't have any roof penetrations. We've run everything out the wall. And we did that just to avoid or minimize possible leaks in the future. We thought it would be more maintenance free. And here I'm just using some snips to cut this solid pipe to length. They sell these things unattached so that you can cut them, but they're really a pain to put together. They're, you know, they're just wide open. You got to snap them together. It's such a pain. Anyway, I got it up. It's in place and I'm making a few final connections. Almost done here. It's funny. I really like the way this stuff looks. I like seeing the vent uh, in the closet. It just kind of gives it a mechanical appearance that I appreciate. I put in a couple 90s here so I could keep it close to the wall on out and then it just 90s twice to meet that vent and then outside. Another nice thing about having this exposed is that it'll be easy to clean out if we need to. I'm starting to work on the window sills now. We have nice thick walls and so we'll need some wide boards for those wide window sills. I'm using some rough and dirty reclaimed lumber here. And so to get that first pass, I wanted to use my old planer. This is probably its last thing I'll use it for. It's at the very end of its life. It's just about to die. But I thought maybe I could get this one last use out of it. And it's perfect because I'll be able to take the, the crust off of these old boards. So these boards I'm really excited about. This was a really cool find we just lucked into, honestly. So we were at a thrift store and we saw this huge pile of wood and we asked them what it was and they said it was a bunk bed. And it looked horrible. It was all dirty and dry and cracked. And we asked them how much they wanted. They said $5 and so we took it. And it ended up being all of this wonderful solid oak lumber. Well, it's not quite solid. And there's one inch pieces that are glued together to make a kind of solid laminate. Anyway, it's great lumber. It's oak, it's beautiful, and it cleans up so nice. And we got it almost for free, and now we're able to repurpose it and use it in a very visible way in our home. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. That pile of oak ended up being what they had used for several bunk beds, so it was a lot of material. We were able to use it to make side rails for our large flatbed trailer and still had a bunch left over. I think I'm going to have enough to do all of the window sills in the house. I brought up my nicer planer and finished planing the board. So here I have them all to the finished thickness and I have them all laid out and I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, cut the windows out of them. So I'm trying to do all the layout here and it took a good bit of figuring. I'm using all of the really wide boards that came with the bunk bed set. This bunk bed must have been really overbuilt. These, I think, were the side boards. Anyway, this wood is so wonderful. It's really thick. It's about an inch and a half thick, and I have it planed down to about an inch and an eighth, I believe. I'm using all of the wide boards, and I'm trying to fit all of my window sills on these boards. It's challenging, and I think I'm going to be able to get it fit, but there's going to be very little extra. I'm going to use up almost every inch of this board. Well, I finally finished the layout and it's all going to work. I had just enough. Now I'm using my little hand circular saw to cut these to size. It is a little close to the edge and I'm kind of, I have my finger pretty close to the saw on a few of these cuts. I'm, I am trying to be really careful and I have quite a bit of experience, but still a little dangerous. Um, it, it always looks worse in the video than when you're doing it in person. But anyway, I've about got all of these cut to length. Once they're cut to length overall, I need to cut two little notches out so it'll fit inside of the window area. And then it'll have a little wing that sticks out on either side. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm cutting in that little notch and then I'll take them over to the house and do a test fit to see how they work. I'm using a hand circular saw to do as much cutting as I can with it, but you never can get into that corner because of the roundness of the blade. So I go as close as I can and then finish it up with a handsaw. I really like these Japanese hand saws. They have a really fine blade and they're sharp as they can be. And so they cut really well. 
and you can get right up close to the edge and get some really nice clean cuts. And so that's what I'm using on this corner and it makes a really nice clean straight corner. Now I'm in the master bedroom doing a little test fit to see how they fit and to see how it looks. And this looks nice. I just wanted to get a feel for how it's going to look in the window. It goes all the way back to the window frame. And so it's a pretty thick, it's like six and a half inches thick there. So this is looking good. I like the way it's fitting. I just need to clean up that front edge and do a little chamfering to give it a finished look. I've brought out my old jointer and getting ready to clean up those edges on all of these boards. I decided to do that before I cut the notches out of the rest of them. I'm taking my time here and cleaning up both edges, both the edge that goes against the window in the back and the front edge that will be exposed and visible. I'm also making sure that they're parallel, which you, know, you can actually get off parallel pretty easily, and so I have to, to measure that and sometimes take a little bit off, more off one side than another, but I try to get them parallel and true and clean on both sides. Well, I've made some progress on these. I've got all the notches cut out, and I've also have some pine boards that I've ripped. That's what you see there that I'm working on at the same time. And I'm getting ready to work on the trim pieces that go underneath the windowsill itself. So I'm using oak for this as well, and it's also from the bunk bed. These were some smaller pieces that I guess were used for, for rungs, for like ladder rungs to get up on top of the bunk bed. But anyway, they're a nice size to make the, the trim that'll go under the sill. Here I'm getting ready to glue on a little spacer piece to make some of these sills a little bit wider. The window sills in the living room need to be extra wide because of that little piece of decorative corrugated metal that we have on the inside. And so the, the bunk bed wood wasn't quite wide enough and I needed to add about another inch of thickness. So I'm getting ready to glue on a piece to add that extra thickness here. Or rather extra width, I should say. I had to glue that extra strip on six of the pieces because we have three big windows in the living room and I'm going to put the sill on the top and the bottom of those windows. Since we have the metal above and below, I'm going to do a sill top and bottom. All the way through the rest of the house we'll just be doing a sill on the bottom. You can see here some of the character that this wood has in the grain and the coloring. It's really nice. So, you know, once I got all that old varnish off, I was really pleased with the look of these boards. I, I really like the character. You know, it's not perfect for like building cabinetry when you're doing that. You want really uniform wood grain and stuff. But for like window sills where you're standalone piece there, you can get away with a lot of character. And so really pleased with how these boards look. They're very interesting and appealing, and I think they're beautiful. These oak window sills are nice and thick. They're over an inch thick, and which I really love. It, it really gives it a lot of character. But the only problem is on the windows that open, you don't really have enough room to get your hands under that lip to open the window. And so I had to route out some notches and kind of make little handhold or depressions where you could get your hand in and get your fingers underneath that lip to open them up. In order to do that, I just created a little jig for my router out of plywood, and I'm able to just use my router, put it inside that jig, follow it around, and it creates the outline for that handhold. And now I'm using my saw with some Forstner bits to hog out the, that material, and then I'm cleaning that up with uh, just a hand chisel. That worked pretty good, but it still wasn't as clean as I would like it, so I decided to take just a little bit more off with the router, and I had to do that kind of freestyle, but as long as I'm not taking a lot of material off, it wasn't too difficult to manage, and that seemed to be working better, leaving a nice smooth surface on that bottom of the groove. These window sills have been a lot of work, and it's definitely been some extra work to reuse the salvage material, but I've really enjoyed it. I love woodworking, and so I've actually been having a blast doing this. I've been working on it just in my spare moments, basically the whole time we were working on the earthen floor and working on the bathroom. So this has been my side project for a good while, but I've really enjoyed it. And here you can see how these handholds turned out. I think they go really well with it. They actually are attractive and add to the look. I love these window sills in general. They're nice, thick, robust wood, really beautiful grain. Here I'm working on filling some cracks, and I'm just using some wood filler to, to fill those in. There was quite a bit of those. I had to, that was a whole step in the process, was to fill all the cracks and then come back later and sand it all down. But there again, I've really enjoyed doing this, and they have a lot of character. They're going to look really cool. As you can see here, the backs of some of these boards were a little rough, but we were able to choose which side was the show side, so we, we put the nice side up. 
And here they are, all laid out and ready for the finishing process, which we'll be showing you in our video next week. We'll also be installing these and starting to work on the door frames, so join us again next week. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.